Hello everybody, I'm Storm here. Welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV Online Endwalker. In the last episode, we began our exploration of Elpis here in earnest, where we mount Hermes and his impossibly adorable bird girl familiar, Meteon. And uh, found out what Emmett Silk is doing here, which pretty obviously he was here to offer Hermes the position of Fan Daniel on the convocation. Because the current fan Daniel is stepping down. He was apparently a friend of Hermes and recommended Hermes for the position. But as it turns out that when people step down from the convocation or just consider their purpose in life fulfilled, they return to the star. Which is a, just a way of saying that they die willingly of their own volition. And uh, Hermes is not exactly thrilled with this. Um, but, according to Hithlidaeus, this is a fairly normal thing. And um, is even celebrated that someone has reached the, uh, the culmination of their life and has decided to, you know, that they're done. So, um... This is why Hermes is a little bit uh, hesitant to take this up, as it you know, represents kind of a tacit approval of his friend's death. And um, he's still thinking about it. And while he's thinking about it, we're going to be following him around and seeing what his duties are on a regular basis. And that actually led us to a patch of Elpis flowers, which were described as entelechies by Meteon, who also described herself as an Entelechi, because she also has the power to communicate via emotions, both, you know, projecting her own and reading other people's. And this is where Fan... not Fan Daniel, Hermes, he's not Fan Daniel yet, um, basically confirmed Nadana and the the Abnerian alchemist theory about Akasha, that there is this separate energy that exists apart from ether that is governed by emotions. And that entities which can convert that energy into tangible phenomenon, like changing brightness and color with the flowers, or by communication, you know, with Meteon, are entelechies. And that this energy, which they call dynamis, is significantly more abundant throughout the universe than ether. And though so if something were to say, uh, able to direct this into, what do you, you know, turn it from a, you know, a gentle stream into a raging river, it might be able to burst through the dam of ether that protects the star because ether basically negates dynamis and um that's sounding rather familiar so we're getting some some clues as to what might be going on with the final days but we still need more info so we're gonna keep following um hermes around and seeing what else that we can learn here And so that is what we are actually going to work on. Now, uh, currently what we have to do is go find Hermes, who is off uh, trying to see what's going on with a creation called the Ribdis that is having some trouble. So, uh... We're going to head over there. Ah. These things. All right, Meteon. Let's see what you have to say. Why is this one blue and shiny? Troubled observer. Ugh, forgive me. I thought another member of the Convocation had come. This is turning to be, be an eventful day. 
the dais. There's a slight difference in etheric balance between these Charybdises. For this, it may be assumed that they aren't the original creations, but their offspring. Mid-Selk? A serpentine bird, or a winged snake. All right, Hermes. I understand there is a problem with one of the Charybdis. Yes, that's right. As you know, the Charybdis is based on a sea creature. Owing to adjustments to enhance its affinity to wind, it is capable of flight. The specimens created from the concept could all fly without issue, but a problem arose in subsequent generations. This third generation creature was born with an etheric balance leaning strongly toward water. Its aquatic origin reasserting itself, it would seem. The result being its affinity to wind is diminished and it cannot fly. No matter what we try, we can't get it to rise even the slightest bit. For such change to manifest in so few generations, I fear they are too unstable, flawed. With your permission, I, I will revert the creatures and recommend to the Bureau that the concept be revised. With its etheric balance leaning towards water, the Charybdis would indeed struggle to manipulate wind. Yet, it is too early to conclude that it cannot fly. Having failed at first, it may simply have developed a fear. I shall transform and fly with it, helping it to manipulate wind until it finds its wings. What? You needn't go to such lengths. Transform? You don't know, but of course not. Transformation is an art in which one manipulates a vast quantity of ether to construct another body around oneself. In practice, this allows one to assume any conceivable form and thereby transcend the limits of one's flesh. Ah, like you did when we fought you as Hades. Yet, uh, convenient though it may be, transforming the presence of others is considered vainglorious in the extreme. As uncouth and unseemly as running around robeless. Shameful. You might understand you make a habit of this. Nothing of the sort. It's just that when transformed, I can wield the wind and fly. It may seem excessive, but what is our shame next to the lives of these creatures? They deserve a chance, and we owe it to, th to them in all our power. Or to do in all our power. Be that as it may. Hmm. Ithlo? Yes. I believe I have a solution. Emmons Elk, may I trouble you to move that Charybdis away from its fellows? Somewhere out of sight. Meanwhile, I'd like the rest of you to help me prepare here. What mischief are you scheming now? No mischief, I assure you. The lie. I would s but spare you the need to report your colleagues that are to your colleagues that Hermes committed an indiscretion. So have a little faith and run along. I trust you don't mind. Alright. Comments? We must help the Cryptus to fly, or else they will all die. What do you think of this? Let's bother when we could simply begin anew, but I shall defer the Chief Overseer. Hermes? Ethodeus is a man of ideas. I wonder what he has thought up this time. Alright, Hithlo. What, uh, what mischief are we planning? Emmonselk is out of sight. Good. 
and let, let's speak of the plan. It's a stroke of genius, really. We have Emmett Selk train the Charybdis. Aside from being able to fly untransformed, he can readily see ether currents. And with his uh, adept spellcraft, he can also employ suitable wind magics to guide the creature along. While he is indeed capable of all you described, it is not his duty. I am loath to trouble him with it. Don't be. As I mentioned, it would also be for his own sake. With that settled, let's begin at once. I want you to go to Emmett Selk. Tell them that you have a favor to ask. You will be disinclined to cooperate at first, but you mustn't be discouraged. With our friend, the trick is to be unflaggingly persistent. Ah, so we just have to basically nag and annoy him until he does what we want. Okay. Off you go now, and good luck. Chat mode and say... Any phrase in any words I have a favor to ask to indicate Emma Emma Sog that you have a request. Alright. Let's go annoy Emma Sell. He did take this thing far away, didn't he? There they are. All right, Emmett. Uh, let's see. I have a favor to ask. Oh, no. You don't. I'm not lifting a finger. I don't know what Hithlodeus is up to, and I will not be made to know. I refuse. If Hithlodeus is to be believed, a relentless insistence may serve to wear down the ever weary Emmet Selk. The chat mode and say, into the words, please, Emmet Selk, to plead with him. All right. Make sure I type it out exactly as indicated. There we go. Oh, no, no, no. You are not foisting this nonsense on me. Yes, we are. I'm given to understand you have the power to help the Charybdis. And should be quite willing to do so. Oh yes, he's quite willing. And so I appeal to your better nature, most benevolent Emmet Selk. Please teach it to fly. Or else Hermes will transform. Right now. Now, now, there's no need to go quite that far. Altruism is its own reward, as I'm sure he would agree. <laughs> oh, would he now? And who contrived to put me in this position, pray tell? Nobody at all. Nothing so devious. I merely suggested a possible course of action. Four on one. Please, Emmett Sulk. Please. Oh. did not come all this way to play nursemaid to your creations. I thank you to remember this favor and let it be the last. There you go. Nice mount. I will aid it once it is taken to the air. It falls to you to shepherd it skyward. Well, let's relax and enjoy the spectacle, shall we? Yes, let's.
You were wondering why Emmett Selk joined the Convocation. Truth be told, he wasn't the first choice for the office. I was, on the strength of my ability to see Ether. But I declined the offer, for though my vision is exceptional, I am pedestrian in all other aspects. Worse even, quite abysmal when it comes to manipulating Ether, for example. Couldn't transform even if I had a mind to do so. What good is the ability to perceive a problem if one cannot act to address it? Emmett Selk has no such shortcomings. He excels in vision and manipulation both, the latter to an extraordinary degree. If there is a mage more powerful, I do not know of them. Thus did I recommend him for the office in my stead. And I wasn't the only one, far from it. Countless others vouched for his skill and character. People the world over, to whom he had previously lent a helping hand. <laughs> oh, how surprised he was. Claimed he hadn't done anything remarkable for anyone. Mod Oops. Modest he deserved fall. every bit of acclaim he received. Yet he may well have gone unappreciated were it not for a mutual friend. A singular soul who can't help but involve herself in the business of others. Where she walks, excitement is certain to follow. Her antics irritate Emmett Selk to no end. But much of his grumbling stems from genuine concern. When our friend calls, he never fails to answer and lend his talents. And in the course of doing so, he himself came to be recognized and respected by those around him. Huh. They are truly remarkable individuals, and I'm proud to call them friends. To help them realize their dreams. This will be my greatest contribution to our world. And when they have fulfilled their respective purposes, so too shall I have fulfilled mine, and together we may return to the star. Look at me, spilling my innermost secrets. I can't seem to help it with you. I can only assume it is due to the color of your soul. I just don't understand how you can be so alike and yet so different. Well, that's a long story. It looks like you can fly. Ah, yes. I dare say the Charybdis will be fine here on. Why don't you go and signal to Emmett Selk? Let him know that his arduous task is at an end. Yeah, basically the way I see it is like uh, Emmett Selk is um, this time period's Azem's Estinian, right? The 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 grumpy, somewhat stubborn friend, but ultimately, you know, a good egg. At least during this time period. All right, we need to wave them at Silk. Emerging from his reverie, Emmett Silk notices you him begins to descend with the Charybdis. You know, but 12,000 years of bearing the weight of an entire civilization, I guess, can take its toll. I have no words to express my gratitude. Thanks to you, the Charybdis has learned to fly. Mm -hmm. 
And Ayame and I could relax and have a pleasant chat. I'm sure you did. The creature needed some small assistance at first, but soon it was flying more or less on its own. I doubt you will need to repeat the lesson. That was truly impressive. Huh. I witnessed it all from afar. The Charybdis flies. Indeed. With this, we've proven that even a creature with skewed etheric balance is capable of flight. Though we helped it to achieve this, the Charybdis is a herd animal. They may well aid their struggling kin in like fashion, fashion if and when the need arises. Keeping this in mind, I bid you continue observing them. If that is what you want. But if I may say so, rather than hoping an idealistic possibility comes to pass, it would not be simpler to have the concept adjusted. That way, we could guarantee that anomalies such as this specimen are never born in the first place. These creatures are already here. It will spare no effort in giving them a chance to survive. As you wish, Chief. As you wish. Hermes? I'm fine. Don't worry. Well, that concludes all my pre all my present tasks. Let us return to Ad Anagnorisis. Anagnorisis? For now. It's a bit of a... tongue twister. Alright. So, back there and speak with them at Silk. So let's go ahead and teleport. The fastest way to get there. Alright, as usual, let's check in with everybody else. Meteon. All the creations are happy. That makes me happy too. It probably makes you happy because Hermes is happy. Hermes? Now you've seen what I can do, or now you've seen what I do. Was it everything you were expecting? I don't know what I was expecting. For the dance. I thoroughly enjoyed myself, and at the end, most of all. Alright, and Emmett? What? I want to apologize for forcing me to help, do you? <laughs> Absolutely not. Save your breath. You didn't force me to do anything. I merely chose the most ex expeditious way to have done with an impediment to our business. Sure you did. That's what you need to tell yourself. You didn't fire me, I quit. <laughs> All right. Something seems to be weighing on Hermes' mind. Tell me, Yummy. In the course of watching me, have you learned aught of value? Hmm. Dynamis. Dynamis seemed promising. Yes. Dynamis, you say? Curious that such an obscure phenomenon should be of interest to you. Deep Hermes, what good fortune to find you here. Is something the matter? The Nikaeon. I'm afraid it's done it again. No sooner did we release one for occupation that it set upon the nearby Occupetes. Yeah, Occupetes. Slaughtering them. Is the creature hungry or somehow provoked? I just fed them myself, and the Occupetes were, were keeping a wide berth. It is the nature of the Lycaon that is to blame. Their innate viciousness. Government aside, it is an outstanding creation, perfect in form and function. Though it may not be suited for release, I have no doubt that the Bureau will accept this concept for preservation. In any case, there's no point in postponing the inevitable. Doros will revert them all once the paperwork is in order. Where is the scene of the incident? Hmm. 
just off the pass path of the Twelve Wonders. As you make your way, you should see it on the left. I don't know if Doros is still there, however. Alright, beast, wait. He doesn't like having to destroy the creations. If this is part of his work, then I would observe. We follow. Fair enough. And we shall follow. Occupete, yes. Killed a whole bunch of them. Damn it. A fearsome beast, this the Kayun. Where is it now? The Occupete is no easy prey. With its hooves and horns, it was designed to be form formidable even on land. Yet they didn't stand a chance against the Likeon. Mition? It's heavy. Hermes Pain. Okay. The lacerations and burns are unmistakable. The Kayun was indeed responsible. The creature is nowhere to be seen. Doros must have taken it away. The man makes his base at the Twelve Wonders. I shall go and seek him out there. And Silk and I will search the area for good measure just to make sure the Lycan did not escape. No oh, thanks. Let's meet at the Twelve Wonders when you are when you have finished. I will go ahead. Please follow with Ayame. Come, come. It's down this path and over the bridge. All right then. To the Twelve Wonders. It appears that there is an etherite there. Creeps. I hear ether current. One I will not have to hunt down later. Oh, there's Metian. There it is, the Twelve Wonders. Hermes is looking for Doros. Let's look for Doros too. He's a man with long blonde hair, I think. I'll know him when I see him. And Metian is now accompanying us. Alright. Let's look for this Doros then. But before we do that, there's a dark-haired man. That's probably not Doros. There's a blonde-haired man over there. With a ponytail. Doros, that's Doros. Oh no, if it isn't Meteon, what brings you here?
Ah, uh, I thought I heard familiar voices. I didn't realize you two had decided to help me search for Doros. Thank you. You're in charge of the... Lycaonis? No, Lycaonis? I believe. Where are they now? Out in the fields and restraints. Frenzied as they were, I couldn't well return them to Catesis. Once I've submitted our report, I'll see them reverted without delay. It's as he says, the beasts are indeed quite ferocious. You're one of the fourteen. What brings you here? Nothing you need to concern yourself with, as you were. We've heard the news that Alikaeon slaughtered Occupetes. As the observer in charge, you are of the opinion that they are not fit to be released? I am. Their abnormal aggression and exceptional strength makes for a highly problematic combination. It matters not where they are released. The uh, Cajones would threaten other species and upset the natural order. Could it be that the specimens observed are an outlier? Highly unlikely. We've created a good many of them, all exhibited the same tendencies. Even when we used Kairos to begin with a fresh slate, their behavior was unchanged. Kairos? A memory reconfiguration system. The chief himself created it. It allows us to erase or alter memories that we may observe creations in different environmental conditions without needing to remake them from scratch. Very impressive and potentially dangerous, depending on the intensity of the etheric emissions. Ashtarot may wish to have words with you. Rest assured, I kept all values within prescribed limits, and to prevent misuse, its applications are limited to those authorized by the Chief Overseer. Did I misunderstand? To manipulate a subject's memories is an intrusive act I deeply abhor, but it is still preferable to execution. Come now, Chief. Let's not be so melodramatic. What was born of Ether is simply being reduced to its original state. I know the distinctions concern you, but we mustn't lose sight of the bigger picture, making rational choices for the sake of a more prosperous star. If a creation cannot be properly studied even with the aid of Kairos, we remake it. If a creation is deemed a detrimental existence, we unmake it. It is all for the greater good, and none question the necessity of such routine processes. I understand these things, I do. I would never think to unleash a clear and undeniable threat unto the world. Yet insignificant though their individual lives may be next to all creation, it is all the Lycaonis the have. Before we seal their fates, we owe it to these beings to exhaust all options, to ensure that nothing has been overlooked. If you insist, let me provide you with a full report, and we may take it from there. Would it be possible for us to attend the discussion, that Emin Silk may better carry out his duties? By all means. Pray, show them to the meeting room. Hermes. We have a duty to the star, this I know, but it doesn't mean we don't also have a responsibility to the lives we bring into existence here. Alright, Meteon. Man, other beings are just things to be used and controlled, like magic. That's what Hermes told me once. Alright, Hermes. I fear this discussion may take a while, during which time... Etion, are you feeling unwell? It's not me, Hermes. It's you. I won't go to the meeting. I'll stay with Ayami. Though, though I am to impose, may I leave Metion in your care again? No problem. I'm in your debt, if you'll excuse me. Alright. 
What do you want to get up to? Can you help me with something, Ayami? The meeting will make Hermes sad. I want to cheer him up with a flower. Hermes likes flowers the most of all creations in Elpis. Most creations are expected to be interesting, or beautiful, or strong, better in some way. The flowers are different. They're designed to suit our emotions, what we feel want to convey. Like, Hermes likes that. I can't make flowers, so I'll search for one. I want, to I want you to search with me. Let's start here, at the Twelve Wonders. Alright. He's now accompanying us. And let's see what we got. Here is a tree in bloom. Vibrant purple flowers bigger than your hands adorn the tree. Ooh, so big and bright. I love them. They might be too bright. I have to think of the recipient. That's what Hermes said. All right. Let's see what else there is. There's a slender tree. I don't think that's what we're looking for, but we'll look at it anyway. A tall slender tree rises before you. You crane your neck to look at for flowers. I don't see any. No flowers. If there were apples, we could have covered them in syrup. Let's head outside next. Don't worry, we won't wander far. Don't worry. Anything bothers us, I'll blow it up. Flower bed. An array of beautiful flowers grow in the bed. They're a mix of colors forming a pattern. Really simple pattern, but a pattern nonetheless. Uh, these would be better for Hermes, but they're hedged in. That means we shouldn't touch them. They're either under observation or poisonous. Any other place should be fine, though. Let's keep looking. Shouldn't touch them, huh? Oh. see about that a familiar plant oh yeah one of these things sit on a tall thin stalk the oddly shaped flower is mesmerizing in its undulations Ooh, a canaan a canaan a flower that can move and Hermes wasn't looking and shot seeds at him not a good gift maybe but you're good at yummy at spotting flowers. We'll find something soon. Alright. Next. Yeah, don't want to mount or can't mount. What do we have over here? Just a junction? You spy nothing promising nearby. At best, common-looking grasses with some few tiny flowers. Nothing around here. Ah! Over there, Yami. Something big. Huge. <laughs> oh, a more bowl? Malodorous grass. A terrible stench reminiscent of sodden old boots pervades the air. Without a doubt, the culprit is the more bowl like creature before you. And Adonis. The things around its mouth look like petals, but the flowers are the orbs on its head. When Hermes inspected it, it swallowed him up. He didn't leave his room for days. What do you think, Yummy? Would you like it? Probably not. So, not this one either. Finding a good flower, it's harder than I thought. I'm sorry, Yami. Could we search a little more? Maybe as far as the fields over there? I'll pick something after that, I promise. Alright. Lush fields. Lush green fields stretch out before you, ending where the sky begins. 
Oh, there's nothing. Hmm, the shiny thing over there, what could it be? Excuse me. Any object. Ah, opus flowers. Oh, opus flowers. They're here too. Hermes likes and dislikes them at the same time. Like me, they're into lackeys. Like me, they feel his pain and turn dark. It's only for Hermes, though. For others, they're always white and bright. Well, at least seen them in different colors. Truly, the flower was dark in your home. Then do you have it too? A dark emotion? Hmm. We'll say I've known the pain of sorrow and loss. I see. Hermes has known the same, the feeling that part of you is gone again and again, but no one notices. Please, Yami, won't you lend it to me, your pain and sorrow? I want you to make the flower dark in front of Hermes. He has been in a dark place since before he created me. He needs to know that he isn't there alone, that others are sad too. Really? You'll do it? Sure. Thank you, Ayame. I thank you. That means more to me than I can say. Can't wait to see how Hermes reacts. Let's go and fetch him. Alright. Okay then. Let's go find Hermes. Um, let's teleport back. Seems they're still talking. Let's wait until they've finished. Come to a decision. My thanks for keeping me to your company. Emmet Selk and Hithlidaeus have already retired to their rooms. There is room for you too, if you would follow me. Wait! I want to show you something first. Elpis flowers? Go on. Ah. Purple. You're not the only one, Hermes. Others feel sad too. You're not alone. Ah. 
I see Mision has shared much with you. He has. May we talk a moment? Little hedgehog. I do not think it wrong that we live for the star, that we strive to make it a better place. And yet, in carrying out my duties here, there are times when I am plagued by doubt. Do you recall what Hithlidaeus said when we first spoke of my nomination? Death is the privilege of those who have fulfilled their purpose, a choice they embrace of their own free will. And when they depart, it is always beautiful. Perhaps it is, but only for man. Creations that he deems useless are discarded with nary a second thought. Some scarcely born into the world, afforded a handful of breaths before life and potential are abruptly extinguished. We make an effort to spare them the pain. They sense what awaits. Rage and anguish and cower and fear. And it is not beautiful. Yet no one cares. No one. So fixated are we upon the duty that we do not pause to question the method. Pain and suffering. Confusion and despair writ plain in the eyes of those poor creatures. Yet no one sees. We turn a blind eye and carry on in blissful ignorance. Not to miss. And always. Always the blossoms shine pure and white. A contradiction so blatant I could scream, want to scream. How can you all accept this aberration? Then I wonder, am I the aberration for thinking thus? And I am filled with dread. But now I know I'm not alone. Not the only one for whom the flowers weep. Owen asked what you thought as you kneeled beside the Alpis. Or if you only did it at Mition's insistence. Nevertheless, I thank you. To know that you too have experienced suffering is a comfort. Uh, glad I could be of service, I guess. Hmm. To so willingly lend an ear to ease my burden. You are a strange one. The stars in the heavens. Know you what they are? Though it is too far to tell, each glittering light could be a world not unlike Aetheris. A world filled with life. So many stars, so many lives. For us, there may be no higher purpose than to live for our world. But what of the other living beings out there? What is it that gives their lives meaning? That drives them day after day after day? To pose that question to our undiscovered cousins, I created beings of dynamis who can traverse the vast emptiness between the stars. Meteon and her sisters. He has sisters. I, sisters. She has a great many of them. And they have already departed on their journey, traveling to one star and then the next in search of life. As one might expect, 
Exploration on such a grand scale is rife with difficulties, and thus far I've naught to show for it. But I have faith that we will make some manner of discovery ere long. And when we do, I should be glad to share our findings with you, in gratitude for your kindness. It's getting rather late. We had best find our beds. It would not do for both of us to be sleep deprived on the morrow. Come, Meteon. Let's head back. Well, that's an interesting bit of information. And given what we know, it's likely that whatever discovery is made doesn't go to as expected. Alright, Mithyan. I'm glad Hermes saw the flowers. Thank you, Ayami. They will help, I hope. Today will be difficult for him. Alright, Emmet Silk. The prodigal familiar returns, and after causing all manner of trouble while we were in our meeting, I'm sure. Nah, not that much. Ithodeus. Were you able to get some rest? Please, do not hesitate to let us know if you're feeling tired. I worry we might exhaust your scarce reserves of ether. Nah, no big deal. An all too brief interlude, perhaps, but it is time I attend to my next task. As Emmett Selk and Hithodeus were aware, we reached the verdict regarding the fate of the Dicaones. Seven were created for observation, and all seven must be unmade. Doros has followed the correct protocols, and as chief overseer, I can find no fault in his judgment. The Lycaonis would disrupt the natural order, ravaging and consuming other species until they themselves starve and perish. They cannot be released into the wild, and they cannot be allowed to remain here in Elpis. I intend to petition the Bureau of the Architect to have the concept preserved as a restricted purpose hazardous life form. Ithodeus has pledged to support me in this endeavor. Yet, whatever the Bureau decides, is the existing Lycaonis have served their purpose. Doros has already isolated the creatures and is preparing to carry out the necessary measures. While joining him forthwith, it is my duty to witness the conclusion to this study. If you are resolved, then we have but to accompany you. Of course, let's be off then. We return to the main aisle. All right. We can keep on proceeding. Uh, we are headed in this direction. and he looks a little worse for wear and we have one two three four of the seven
Hold on, so you're hurt? What happened here? They, they caught me off guard. I had them bound with ethereal shackles, but they became frenzied, even more so than usual, and broke free. I was able to stop four. The other three escaped. I see them. Two have taken to the air above the Twelve Wonders. The last is up ahead, lurking in the fields. You and the army handle that one? The pair in the sky? You can leave to me. Sure thing. If this is how it must end, then so be it. Yeah, they're a danger to everyone and everything here. I will render assistance to Edmund Selk, undeated though it is. Etian, you are to stay here with Doros. Hermes. The Lycaonis must be reverted. I would spare you their pain and mine. This is my burden, not yours, but if you are intent on helping, then please follow my lead. Alright. Dramatic music. And there is one of them. I appreciate your help and lament that it is necessary. There it is, our quarry. Within striking distance at present, but it feels if it feels threatened, it may well flee beyond our reach. Here's my plan. You approach slowly and feel view, full view and draw the Lycaon's attention. No, I warn you, its abilities are as fiery as its temperament. Once it spots you, it will unleash something. Uh, but fear not, by my measure, you are more than equal to the task. Withstand the onslaught for but a few brief moments, and I'll give me the time to catch it unawares. Ready? Let's begin. Alright then. Using fireballs, all right. Okay. Two more. with that. Now. Forgive me. Please forgive me. May you and your kin find peace. Wherever your souls may drift in the underworld, may you find tranquil seas. Be not forgotten, in concept endure, to reclaim form and one day live again. Serve not 
the star, or any purpose save your own. Live again, if that be your desire. Hate, if that be your want. We are worthy, but leave your suffering behind. Lay down your burdens, be born anew. Fly high, fly free. Join the convocation, Hermes. You do not belong here. Leave to replace another. To be replaced. It changes nothing. Tell me, do you think it right that we sacrifice all these lives for the sake of the star? And when the star has reached perfection, what then? If all who are satisfied choose to die, shall we all die in satisfaction? I do not know. Were I to take up the seat of Van Daniel, it would be tantamount to approving my predecessor's death. I do not know if it is right and to be torn by such thoughts. I do not know if I am fit to represent mankind. Hermes! Please, don't be angry. It hurts so. Forgive me. If you would still consider me in spite of everything, I beg some time to gather my thoughts. Meanwhile, Hithlidaeus, I fear I must trouble you to attend to the others. Tis no trouble at all. Take as long as you require. And you, my friend. I pray you find that which you seek. I expect we have some few matters to discuss. Shall we return to the Twelve Wonders for a time? Aye. Yep, he seems deeply conflicted about the very society in which he lives, and how it operates. Alright, Hithlidaeus. It's been quite exciting, quite an exciting visit for you thus far. Oh, you weren't injured, were you? Good, good. No, we're fine. Uh, the other Lycones have been taken care of. The incident is resolved, and life in Elpis continues as normal, or ends, as the case may be. Rationally speaking, I understand Hermes' argument. No matter how well deserved the rest, there is a pang of sadness when a colleague leaves us. Yet, never has a departure caused me such grief as Hermes appears to feel. What must it be like to experience such torment? And, uh, Hethodeus won't give me the next quest yet, because I'm not 87. Well, that can be rectified. But what we'll do is we'll end the episode here. And I uh, will rectify that issue. So for now, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Go ahead, like, subscribe, and comment. And I will see you next time.